What's going on everybody, LK here, back at it again with another video, and today, some more Guilty Gear for y'all. So, if you missed it, earlier this week, Arxis put out an article called The Developer's Backyard. This is their, not only just their response to the feedback that they got from the beta, but also a way to let us, the fans, know what's kind of going on, what are they thinking, what are they doing with Strive, all that kind of stuff. Now, I posted some comments that I had on the article earlier this week, I believe it was Wednesday, and as usual, a lot of y'all had your own comments, and I wanted to uh, respond to some of these comments. Uh, I don't think responding in the YouTube comments like I normally would, would be enough, and I am definitely you know, interested in having this type of conversation for Guilty Gear. If you like this video or any of the other videos I put out, uh, please like this video or subscribe to the channel. Or if you really want to, do both. Uh, it helps the channel grow a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So with that, let's get started. So a uh, couple of things to get out of the way. One, I've competed in Guilty Gear since Exert Sign. You know, I've been grinding that game a lot. Exert Sign basically through Rev 2.1. In Rev 2.1, I played, but like not like super hard body. I played Melia basically the whole time. This character is pretty much the reason why I play this game. And another thing that I want to bring up too is that uh, I think it's pretty important to actually like look at the game for what it is. There's one comment, I'm not going to spent too much time on this one comment but it's, it's just basically somebody who's looking for me to trash the game the whole time and they weren't happy that there are aspects of strive that i think are done well especially about the actual game that i think are done kind of well uh, overall my current opinion of strive is not that much of a positive one i think it's pretty bland um of course my character is not in the game so that might make a big difference like being able to play milia or being able to find a character i actually enjoy playing might make a huge difference in how i feel about the game but uh, as of right now if you told me like okay you know you're playing may like in the beta and this is just like what you're going to do i would just be like nah i'm probably not going to play there's a lot of stuff i don't like about the game Right, the game itself, the fighting in the game, which is the most important part of the game to me. There's a couple of things about the game itself that I like. And a lot of the other things like the UI and like lobby and like music. Music wise, I really hope it's really not the, it's the screaming vocals, bullshit blazing society for every track. That's all they have to do to fix that, I think. Uh, the lobby, we just got to see what they're going to do. And, you know, the UI, we got to see what they're going to do. And they talked about it. Uh, a lot and he said they want to improve those things so I'm not going to be talking about that so much and the comments I've picked are also not so much about those things. They're mostly about the game itself and Guilty Gear itself. So here's the first one for today. Slowly Arxis games are going to become as easy as Dive Kick. I really sleep on comments like this uh, and I only picked this like obviously the you could be like oh you could just ignore this but uh, I feel like this needs to be addressed because it's something I talked about before uh, a few times on the channel about like the cycle of a new fighting game coming out in the first place and a lot of the uh, for better or for worse a lot of the discussion that comes out from the developer side about new fighting games are always about how they're trying to uh, make it more accessible for new people but in especially in the case of Arxis games each one they have put out since they have started really adding that to uh, what they address in each game has been pretty historically difficult games. Uh, Blazable aside, because to be honest, I don't think they explicitly mention this or I don't remember them talking about that specifically in the case of when Blaze Blue released but uh talking about Persona, even Exert, uh Dragon Ball, Grand Blue, uh BB Tag, they always mention these things. Then uh Online comments always like, oh boohoo, they're making games easier, blah blah blah, because the devs are saying it's easier and oh my god, it has auto combos, or like they're trying to make combos easier. Then the game comes out, then we discover the game is hard or stupid or something. But, and as I've mentioned many times in this channel, the actual things they do to make the game easier, you guys never talk about. You only talk about the super base things that they, to be fair, that the dev addresses but but it, like it's been literally like eight years persona came out in 2012 like we should know a little bit what to expect when they talk to us like this right i fully expect and i will definitely go into this later in this video uh there are already things about strive that i think uh the like the hypocrisy of strive is they keep saying they want to do easy stuff but there's already like a bunch of things that are 
really difficult for new people to do already in the game. Um, but we'll we'll go into that discussion a little bit more later. So second comment, uh, this interview is a hypocrisy, ridiculous. Why make it seem like you're listening to the fans when you already have a set idea of what you're going to do? I never thought ASW do this to Guilty Gear. It's disgraceful. I'm not going to support this game. Uh, I understand that Guilty Gear players are really, really passionate. So uh, from my perspective, Guilty Gear is like, Guilty Gear is a game about selfishness from top to bottom. Uh, and what I mean is like, it, it, it's it's kind of like built into the game. Like take like Biken, right? Take Biken. This is a joke that's been going around this week that uh, anyone who, you know, wants Biken to be back in the game doesn't play the game, right? That's a, that's a, it's a pretty common joke that people make uh, because a lot of people who play the game, especially competitively, they don't like Biken. Biken is, can be really, really obnoxious to play against if your character doesn't outright beat her now the, now the thing that bothers me is that like it, i just feel like guilty gear players you know i think it's uh more extreme as far as strive goes right but like take take my history in fighting games so i, I started as a melty blood player in traditional fighting games right so guilty gear players were like this game fuck sucks then blaze blue came out like blaze blue doesn't even have five buttons the combos are easier there's no oki this game sucks persona auto combos this game sucks it's too easy street fighter 4 this game sucks it's too easy marvel 3 this game sucks it's too easy a new guilty Gear, guilty Gear exer came out and guilty Gear players were still like yrc is stupid where's my frc this game sucks right then dragon ball comes out stupid ass in the game this game sucks then another new guilty Gear comes out this game sucks it is impossible to satisfy some of you people unless it's xx and i i just don't know what to say about that and the worst part about that in my opinion is also is that in the actual article they talk about stuff that they are going to directly address you know like uh i don't think they they are going to change the gatlings back to uh xx style they're just not going to do it right that's just the way it's going to be so what are this what are they supposed to say to you like uh we're sorry we'll try to put gatlings back the old way for a little bit for like a week and see how that goes and then we're gonna go back no like they're gonna do it and all the other stuff that people complained about they said they want to fix i just feel like there's a large portion uh of the guilty gear scene that cannot be satisfied but i also understand because it's a series you really care about and you're really passionate about but it's also the reason why i personally find it very hard to call myself an actual tr true guilty gear player because i don't associate with that uh i uh, i call myself a fighting game player like i try to play you know, when a new game comes out, I try to play it no matter what. I just play the game for what it is. Uh, and this type of this type of comment has come up a lot. It, this is it's just, of course, because it's just on my most recent video. But for a lot of the Stripe stuff that's come out, and a couple of other times in that past video, there are just people who just, like, there is no... Like, if you know you're not going to be satisfied, I don't understand why you would even consume the content in the first place. Like, are you just waiting for people to just shit on the game the whole time too? Like, I, I don't understand. At least, like, you know, just keep on seeing what they're going on. If your character... I mean, and I'm not saying specifically to this person, because if you are if you already decide the game sucks, then, like, nothing can be done. But if you're, like, a, someone like me who, like, I mostly think the game sucks, I think it's pretty mediocre, as I said earlier. But, like, my character's not in the game yet, so, like, maybe they could change my mind. Then just, like, you know, just keep on seeing what they're putting out and do definitely give them feedback and talk about the game so they know at least what we're thinking, you know? Uh, I have the impression that like a lot of just like the flat everything sucks comments, they kind of just read over. Okay, third one for today. Uh, I understand why you say, ah, oh, it's gonna be good if it's okay on release, but hell no bro, condoning it with this bullshit for years is what made these companies release those games incomplete. No, I mean, I get what you're meaning, but it really, and I, I know you're also saying that you understand what I mean, but I, I want to be really clear that uh, in the case of previous games, so like especially Blaze Blue, Blaze Blue is the one that's really really standing out in my mind because the issue was that so, the reason why the original Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger, I think for the most part at least like just died really quickly is because there's just so many. The game itself wasn't good, by the way. The game is not a good game if you look back on it. Not a good game. There's a lot of issues, a lot of balance issues, stuff like that. Uh, but it really didn't help that all of the like the way people memed about the game and the way people talked about the game um like it really just didn't help it, its case if the game is okay if the game is okay there will be some people say it sucks and there will be some people who really like it and we need the people who really like it you know uh it, 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 it shouldn't be bullshit too because a lot of the versions of games that we like so for example uh if we're talking about guilty gear uh, the the shining example. I don't I actually could give two shits about this version. Honestly, my favorite version of XX is AC, 
but uh, a lot of people are about ACR. ACR is like the perfect guilty year. It's the perfect guilty year. It's the perfect guilty year. How many versions, aka how much quote unquote bullshit, did you have to deal with before you got to that? You had to go from XX to Sharp Reload to Slash to AC, and then they had AC for like six or seven years as the only version they could play, and then ACR. So ACR is the fifth version of XX. Uh, so having the base be at a good point means the community will also be at a good point for them to build on the game. A lot of, honestly, a lot of fighting games on release are bad, but it's because they're trying new ideas. And when I say bad, I mean the game, like, there's issues with the way the game is made. So, for example, SF5, a big one is, like, you know, the character designs were too bland, or um, if you talk about, again, Blaze Blue, the original Blaze Blue, um, really badly balanced, bad guard system, terrible burst system, you know, there's a bunch of issues, right? So usually a new release will have this. Even Exert had problems on release. YRC was, uh, I mean, that really, really affected the game. It was not implemented well in the original version of the game. Uh, that's probably one of the shining examples, I would say. So, I mean, the first version of a game is definitely, definitely going to have some problems. I'm expecting the game to have problems on release, but if it's at least, if, it, if I can say it with a straight face that it's not bad, like straight up bad, like an, another another one, Dragon Ball, right? Uh, random characters having meterless hard knockdowns for no apparent reason. Uh, the disproportion between like tools between characters, stuff like that. Characters having like assists that make no sense and don't work the way they're supposed to. Uh, Ginyu just being a whole glitch character. There's a bunch of issues with Dragon Ball and release too. So I I really want that st Strive to not have these issues. That'll be very good for its release. So here's the next one, second to the last one for today. Um, I just can't understand they want to make the game easier by limiting your options. Why? Limiting options is the worst thing any fighting game can do. Look at Dragon Ball as auto combos and super dash, which are beginner friendly mechanics, but to be at least decent, you have to master other gameplay aspects of the game. And DBFZ has a lot more to offer besides SD and AC. They don't limit players' options. I don't understand. The 2D sprites lobby system should be thrown in trash. Just remove it, Thanos that bitch. Okay. We can start at the end of this first. Uh, I am also willing to see what else they want to add to that system. Uh, obviously, we haven't seen everything from it. I don't like it either, to be honest, but if the new stuff that they said they haven't shown us yet adds to this system that much, and it's really something you can only do in 2D and not 3D, then, I mean, by all means, right? Like, whatever. Uh, but the first part of this comment is much more important. There is definitely misconceptions about how this game is, straight up. So. Uh, this is what I touched on at the beginning of the video, but um, this game, my probably my biggest issue with Strive right now is that like it feels like it doesn't know what it wants to do because of course the devs, no matter what new fighting game comes out, the devs are always going to say, you know, we want more, we want it to be more accessible for people, blah blah blah. Uh, as somebody who has a lot of experience in Guilty Gear, you're going to look at things like the combo changes, especially if you haven't played the game, uh, the combo changes, uh, the Gatling system and how that works, uh, and, and how certain mechanics have been removed, like IB, that's one that really pissed a lot of people off, and you can be like, oh, they're limiting our options, but, and the scope of like, understanding what high level Guilty Gear is, uh, the game is actually already, I have the impression that it's a pretty difficult game game to play already despite them saying they want it to be easier for new people so it seems like what they want to do is they want like the super base stuff so like things like combos uh especially um to be favorable for new people and like uh, how the jump ins and air dashes work to be favorable for new people but a lot of like the let's say core guilty gear play so especially things about the ground game i feel like it's more difficult now and probably one of the things that people don't understand is that like in Exert, there you if you go like super macro right and just step all the way back there are essentially only two types of characters in Exert. there are the ones who can hit confirm off everything and there are ones who cannot right uh the ones who cannot are what i call classic guilty gear characters this is like a major 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 theme of guilty gear and this is one thing that when i played strive at frosty before they added new air dashes i was like oh like this actually you know feels pretty good and i think they could do something with this um uh, the characters we got to play uh, all have kind of classic guilty gear ground games so for example i have Milia and soul here they both have this let's pick soul since a lot of people like playing soul so soul you know he has a far poke like this that he can't combo off of generally without spending a resource uh, 
he has to be usually pretty close or he has to get a counter hit. Milia is kind of similar, like you have to hit somebody out of the air. Uh, if you use her good pokes like this or this, you generally don't get combos unless you spend a resource like that, right? Now, this is a very, very prevalent in Strive. There's a whole theme in Strive of that, like, they don't want you to get big combos off, like, jabs, which is, uh, in Exert, characters like Elfelt or, like, Raven can get combos off these situations. These are characters that can combo off everything all the time. Um, in my opinion, characters like Elfelt and Raven and to a certain extent like Johnny, like any character who's really good at hiccuping all their hits, they're not really playing Guilty Gear, right? You're, it, like, they're in the game, but they're, like, they don't follow the rules of what uh, core Guilty Gear characters have. And that's like a lot of returning, like Soul is always like this, Kai is always like this, Milia is always like this, Mei is always like this, stuff like that. So let, let's get in the thick of it, right? So Gatlings would be a really good example. So, uh, you know, you could do a combo like this with a Gatling and just go into whatever combo you want, right? But in Strive, you would not be able to start it with P in general, unless you do something special, unless you have some special property on one of your moves and you're near the corner or something like that. So, uh, and they say this explicitly in the article, you, they want people to be aware of what button they're pressing in specific situations, which is not, absolutely not an easy thing to do. Uh, there are people who uh, have played, since we're talking about Guilty Gear, especially because the franchise is so old, there are people for sure who have played every Guilty Gear who will say, I am a veteran of Guilty Gear, I played Guilty Gear for a long time, who cannot do this, I promise you. They cannot do that. It is a very, very, very difficult thing to do. Uh, if you watch, let's say, uh, I'm assuming not everybody who would watch a Guilty Gear video would watch stuff about Dragon Ball, especially like online ranked matches or something like that. But if you do watch me play uh, and play online ranked matches, you'll notice how I comment on things like, ah, I confirmed that situation, so I did this, or, oh, this guy wasn't paying attention, so I was able to do this, right? Uh, and even, and this is like even in higher ranks of the game and even in tournament play, like competitive tournament play at big majors, at big tournaments, uh, I notice these things. So. Uh, I, f I just feel like, you know, it feels like they don't know what to do or they're, they're only trying to like satiate a kind of base level, entry level play by making things like the combos easier. Because the combos are objectively like easier. Uh, one thing that they also mentioned about combos are uh, how freeform they are and for the people who don't understand that it's because like basically everything combos into everything especially in the corner mid screen the combos are kind of limited but that's actually been a theme in Arxis games for a long time and in Guilty Gear if you want to use Guilty Gear as an example it's what we just said before right uh, your far pokes you basically don't get combos off it or you get a very limited combo like this right uh, in Amelia's case sometimes you really can only get this sometimes soul can really only get this like sometimes you just can't get combos uh, it's a theme that's in blaze blue persona uh it's in many arxis games so what i want to say is uh i think you got to make sure that you really understand uh certain aspects about like the core element of play in gg before you say something like that uh because like in in one aspect yes it's like they're limiting you but in the other aspect it's like and, and the, the limit the limitation is supposed to be that oh it makes it easier but in the other aspect it's like they made it harder it's kind of for no reason. I, I also think it's kind of an odd choice, but I want to see more. And also, again, I want to see it with my character. Okay, so this one is kind of a big one. It's kind of two comments in one, right? Uh, but this the discussion, the interaction, I thought would, would be a good idea to address. So one person starts responding to the things about Gatlings. I introduced Rev2 to a coworker. They were slowly getting into it until I told them all the options. Like, if you think the combo might work, it probably would. He got it. He liked that you could do what you want. And Rev2 is very fair. You're losing. It will partly be because you're messed up somewhere. Not everybody's okay with this. If people complaining about long combos and damage, that's what Burst is for. Luckily, GG has this for this. Okay, that's kind of really worded. Other games, you guys sit through opponent's combos, yet people still play it. Not saying they should stay, uh, change Strive to be like Rev2 completely, but for them to leave the skill gap alone and make the game how they want to make it. In Strive, I saw someone do 6P with May the whole match, got to the corner, did a combo off the new wall spot mechanic, massive damage, seasoned players won't stand for that. And the reply to that is, Burst isn't actually a valid out. It's once per round. Usually, plenty of burst safe offense. Johnny is the most egregious of this. The, the you deserve losing comment is also a continuous death spiral of knockdown into Oki into knockdown to Oki. Defense is inherently more difficult 
due to it being a reactive gameplay and a single failure undoes all that effort. Rev 2's walls for players are a miserable hurdle. Exert's offense was strong enough to invalidate many of the defensive mechanics and that's why people will drop the game once they hit a wall. So there's a lot to uh, take in here. So the first comment is like one of those anecdotal, you know, like I taught my friend Rev and they like it like this, right? And Rev 2's fair. So let's start with Rev 2's fair. Rev 2 is not a fair game. It's a very unfair game. It's definitely, Guilty Gear is, uh, one of the themes of Guilty Gear is mis mischief. They said this uh, in an uh, interview about Strive 2. It's mischief, right? Like they want you to use bullshit on people. They design these characters with these things, right? Look at, uh, and especially look at like, repeatedly hated characters like Milia or Eddie slash Zato or new new members to the hate club like Alpha, right? Like Milia, how does she beat you? Knock you down, put the ring on you, mix you up till you die. Alpha puts a gun in your face, shoots you till your dies, has a better command grab than grab the character, etc. Right? Zato attacks you with another character and does unseeable mix ups until you die. Yeah, and on and on and on, right? The game is not fair. The game's not made to be fair, but the uh, uh, people who play this understand the game and they like the strengths of their character and I'm also of the opinion that uh, people would much prefer an uh, unfair game with strong and fun characters and a fair game with uh, bland bland or homogenized characters. Uh, one of the best examples of this is from a pretty obscure game but probably my favorite fighting game of all time which is Melty Blood at Cadenza version B2. Definitely a mouthful to say but it is actually a very fair game. It's a really, really fair game, but a lot of people thought it was a boring game because the characters just didn't have that much that they could do. A lot of the characters were kind of similar. They do have like their small little varied differences and stuff, but um, it wasn't enough for people. People do like strong, strong, strong tools. And it also helps to make the characters more unique. And this is one thing that Guilty Gear is really, really good at. But this brings me to the next part where uh, the second person says Burst is not a valid out because they have this kind of back and forth about Burst. Burst is a legitimate escape. Uh, it is a skill to know how to use Burst the right way. Uh, there, Every character has Burst safe stuff so I don't think it's, I don't think that point is really fair. Uh, I would say a hard part is that, uh, and this is part of the learning process for this game, is that you have to learn how to Burst in general and then you have to learn how to Burst against characters. Uh, Guilty Gear, of course, is very, very much about the characters. So you need to learn how to burst Soul, you need to learn how to burst Milia, you need to learn how to burst Slayer, you gotta learn how to burst against every single character. Uh, which brings me to the third thing I want to address in these two's comments and the little back and forth they have is the point about you deserve to lose because you mess up. So this is such a talk and this goes into many games, right? So uh, for example, I could talk about Dragon Ball, right? Uh, they, I have gotten many comments on this channel about how, uh, you know, like I talk about how I like, why one of the reasons why I like Snap is because I got a guaranteed situation off a hit that I honestly might probably, let's say 80% of the time, have earned right? You earn this hit, you snap them, you get a guaranteed mix-up, right? As opposed to doing like a slide knockdown. Yes, there's option coverage, but the opponent, and depending on like how much you have, the opponent has really, really, really strong tools to push you off, right? In a game like Exert though, downs are just downs. Like you just get knocked down, you got to get up. So once you get knocked down, it's a pretty bad spot. Uh, there are characters like my own Milia who, uh, she's right down here, by the way, right? She's right down here. There she is. A character like Milia, she will knock you down and that's how she wins the game. We call this uh, the win condition of the character, right? So when you talk about character strategy, this uh, this is one of those, when you step back, I think about macro uh, character strategy, one of the legitimate things you have to aim to do against Milia is not get knocked down because if you get knocked down, you lose, right? So uh, from there, I, I feel like it's a very like fields type of thing. Like what the second commentator is saying uh, uh, talking about it as a death spiral and stuff like that uh, is definitely the more extreme of the one end where they're like, just because I get knocked down, I shouldn't lose the game. Uh, but the other end is like, you really should aim to not get knocked down if the character's whole goal is to knock you down so they could win the game. Uh, it seems though that uh, in Strive specifically, they don't want at least that type of win condition. Uh, and recently, and I think that... Uh, both 
Dragon Ball Fighters and a little bit Grand Blue have this kind of in common, where it seems that the win conditions for characters are more homogenized. It's like a way more like a, it's command grab characters, it's poke throw. Since it's since it's like a direct guessing game where you can like mash out and stuff, they're fine with that. Or uh, oh, I just beat you neutral, like more not more simple per se, but less punishing win conditions than um, things like getting knocked down and dying. Um, I, I could definitely agree that like. For sure, if you're new and you're playing a Zato for the first time, and especially in a version like, because it varies by version, right? But sometimes there are versions of Guilty Gear where Zato will, will loop an unblockable onto you, or even take Elfel, Elfel can loop her unblockable, right? Um, that's obviously not fair and probably not fun for anybody, right? I don't think that's cool or anything. I do think uh, macro things like this, actually add, macro ideas, I mean, uh, add to the game a lot. And uh, I think it's, Okay, since I feel like a theme that they are going for is to make offense not like that. So they're kind of with uh, the second com commentator, but we have to see uh, some of the other characters. Like, they, we still haven't actually seen Milia and Zato play yet, and uh, they both have this win condition. And Milia more than Zato. Zato can just beat you in neutral. So there, there is a version of this character where, you know, in Strive, Zato, you know, you'll be controlling... Zato and Eddie at the same time, but he just beats you in, new, in neutral with like no beat and stuff like that. But Milia has pretty much always been she beats you by knocking you down. All the versions where she sucks, she can't knock you down. Like Rev 2.0, she's bad at knocking you down, she sucks. Like that's just the character. So I feel like uh, how they make her will be a really big indication to how they're going to treat uh, this idea in general in the game. Okay, that was... Uh, quite a bit that was like five or six comments depending on how you uh flesh it out again i know people have all sorts of expectations hopes whatever for guilty Gear strive uh again i want to just see milia but i also think it's important to talk about these uh things because of how long of a history guilty gear has i personally like talking about it too because i don't again like i said at the beginning of the video uh, i don't consider myself to be purely a guilty gear player because i think that type of player will have a much not only a much different idea compared to myself but uh also a much harsher basically if it's not like xx it's not guilty gear uh response to basically everything they're doing as usual if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them in the comment section below like and subscribe if you feel like it and i'll see you next time peace out